first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. And others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. All right, all right. Back once again with Dr. Ali Mel Bay. All right, tonight's discussion is going to be on the higher self conquering the lower self, the master of your fate. Um, the master of each and every one of our faith should be our higher selves. Um, the question is, how do we reach that? Because we're inundated with lower self things, lower nature, lower mind things in this particular third dimension on this realm or density level. So um, we're going to use some, we're going to basically go from each religion or denomination, sex, cult, schism, and ism and try to decode a lot of this information. And we're going to start first as me being a washer to a Moor, being also a Grand Sheik of the Moorish um, Holy Temple of Science of the World. Um, we're going to use Prophet Noble Dralee's information coming from the 101, 102, as well as also from the Holy Quran Circle 7, um, because it does speak about the higher self and the lower self. But um, we know that Prophet Nubadr Ali or Sheikh Sharif Abdul Ali was an Egyptian adept who was learned in Islamism, which is the old-time religion. Actually, the old-time religion is Sematawi, which is the ancient mysteries of Egypt, as it is called, as he went um, on his travels abroad while in Egypt, um, he was taught the lesser and greater mysteries and how they apply to the oneself. Once initiated and brought to the level of a neophyte, then an adept, which is a master, he came back to America to teach Islamism. Now, of course, some say that he might not have left the Americas and that actually he was taught within the various mysteries of possibly the Rosicrucians, the Asafrika Society, as well as also taught by Sufis such as Jamal Afghani, who came to the Americas, who taught allegedly Prophet Nobudrali's family, as well as was the teacher to the Theosophical Rosicrucian founder, Madame Bavaski, um, as well as also the family is supposed to have belonged to the Moorish Zionist temple in Brooklyn, New York, in which that... Um, the temple still actually exists as a 
matter of fact, I know the bishop, um, or better yet, the rabbi who is over that um, to this day, um, who's over it right now. Um, but the very first lesson of the divine law that was handed down, it came December the 15th, 1928, and it was to know thyself and to learn your higher and lower self and to know your inner strengths, to know that the soul of man is the counsel chambers for the manifestation of a law, but the soul must be pure for love to live, thus cutting off the body of desires that resides within the flesh. Those attributes in which that we call lust, greed, jealousy, envy, hatred, all these are attributes of fear, which fear is actually the opposite of love, as we would say. So um, thus the soul of man becomes the battleground between good and evil. Need and desire, love and fear, or love and lust. A conflict that cannot be told in words. So, this is this is what actually um, we have to master. All right, but but they both strive not going down. All right, and man also abide therein. So thus we have the religion of Islamism, which is actually Sematawi, um, in which that the various branches in which that developed from the ancient mystery school of Sematawi, which is um, the Herbach teachings, the teachings of light, or the Hakka teachings, is Sufism, the Rosicrucian, Freemasonry, and etc. Right? The inner struggle of man to raise from the depths of hell to the highest heights of spiritual life. Thus the science of Islamism is to know thyself and Allah. All right. So, because when you know thyself, you become a law, which is ura or hiru ra. All right, um, or hiru sebek or hiru set. All right. So, this information is found in the Moorish literature article written by um, Prophet Nobadrali in his religious um, controversy, page eight, Savior of Humanity, page nine, and What is Islam, page ten as well as in the Holy Quran, um, Circle 7, um, emphasis on Chapter 35 on the Holy Instructions of the Prophet, Religion, page 42, as well as also the Holy Quran questions of the um, 101, which is actually um, Key 17, Key 18 on page 2. Now, the ancient mysteries, as we said, is called the Herbak or Herubak, which are the teachings of light. They're also called the inner traditions. Now, the ancient name for the sacred traditions is called the Hakka, which actually are the teachings of Tahuti, All right? which together it is called the mastery of the lower self set, which is the mysteries of the lesser, and then the mysteries of the greater, right? which is the higher self or Heru. So it's the mastery of the lesser and greater mysteries. Or Sematawi, all right? Um, which is also, like we said, um, that was, what, that's the signs of being a moral scientist. Now, I'm going to say some things in which that some of you might not know, you know, and it hasn't been brought clarity, right? When we talk about um, Satan, we're actually talking about the flesh itself. All right, this is why the mark of the beast is 666, because it symbolizes six protons, six neutrons, six electrons. All right, in which that symbolizes Satan, which is actually the flesh. All right, now, the flesh is not something in which that is evil. However, in the Gnostic text, it was perceived as such because the soul becomes embedded inside of the flesh, which actually becomes the house or the temple of God. All right. Now, in the Gnostic teachings, they they particularly tell you that the soul becomes incarcerated, hence incarnated in the flesh. This is the way they felt about it, and that when the soul escapes the flesh, then it has been released from a prism or prison. It's the way that they feel about it. But as if you look at the flesh as being something. You know, it's it's a perception. If you look at the flesh as being something evil, 
Um, there are many who, when you study their Taoism, they don't see the flesh as something evil. They see it as the temple of God, as well as also um, other Gnostics also seen it. They, these are just perceptions within the same school of thought. But, um, you know, you can even gain immortality in this flesh, you know, by mastering the science of vibratory rates, by the science of breath, through the science of breath. Now, that's Satan, a sat on, which is a form of set, which is symbolic to the ruling planet of sat of Saturn. Now, astrologically, in astral theology, Saturn is known as the black planet, and that planet has an influence over the structuring of your bone structure, your bone skeleton, or your skeleton system, which approximately you have 200 bones, about 209 bones, all right, after the fusion, as you age going into puberty, you're born with about 300 and some odd bones. However, as they fuse together, by the time that you reach puberty, it goes down to about 200. Now, within the book of Enoch, it speaks about the fact that there was 200 fallen angels. That is symbolic to your skeleton system. And how we know is because they said that these angels came from the planet Saturn. So it's about the influence, these angels or angles of light that influence the structuring of the human body and the bones being the foundation of your physical existence because they're the most dense part of you, all right? The bones are so dense that it only make up about 22, um, 22% of water, you know, while most everything else in your body range between 60 to 90% or more. But the bones are so dense that it's only made up of 22% of water. That's the most dense portion of yourself, all right? Crystal. That's what it is, crystal. Now, Saturn also has an influence in your DNA. It also has a, an influence on your blood system. Now, when you go and study astrology, you will find these key points. So you will have to find where Saturn is located at within a particular house of your sign, of a particular sign in your zodiacal chart. And you will also have to see if it's afflicted. And that way you would know the things that you will have to combat against, you know, medically. So Saturn symbolizes your skeleton system, which is your foundation. That's what gives structure to your physical body. Without your bones, you'd be a mass of flesh and blood, nerves and arteries with no structure. In other words, you will look like Jabba the Hunt. All right? So that's the key. That's the influence. So set of Saturn is not evil. It gives you a, a structure and a foundation. All right? So let's, we have to look at it from that perspective. Now, when you look up the word, when you go to the word Lucifer, then you're talking about the light bringer or the light bearer. And they always tell you Lucifer name, but that's a Latin name. You know, you go to the book of Isaiah and it speaks about, oh, how thou Lucifer has fallen from heaven like a flash of lightning. That's talking about, you know, but Lucifer is not Hebrew. That's Latin. So what is his Latin name? I mean, you know, we got his Latin name. What is his Hebrew name? You know, well, you go to um, the Dictionary of Angels. That's what I recommend. Go to the Dictionary of Angels. Um, in the Dictionary of Angels, it is Uriel, the archangel, who used to have the um, next highest position in heaven behind Michael. All right, there were seven archangels. These seven archangels symbolize the seven angels or the seven archangels mentioned within the book of Revelation. All right. Um, in the Apocrypha, Enoch the first, or which is called the Ethiopic Enoch, you have Michael. And Michael within Hebrew means he who dares to be like God. 
and he was the chief of the archangels. He symbolized protection, also the crown chakra, the pineal gland. His name, um, his mystery name is Sabatiel, and he's the ancient of days, Yanan, or Adonael, or um, Zakiel. His other name is Melchizedek, all right? Then you have um, Uriel, who used to have the position of Gabriel, but because of his pride, he fell from the position of Gabriel, which was the second position behind Michael, to the seventh position. So hence, this is what that is referred to. So Uriel becomes the ego in this sense. All right? Remember, Uriel, which is Lucifer, Iblis, wanted to become like Michael, according to um, the story told to us within the Bible as well as also within the Holy Quran. All right? Now, Gabriel now sits at the second position. And, of course, Gabriel is the angel or messenger of earth, um, the energies that reside within the stratus, um, the stratosphere, you know, or the messengers of God. You know, he symbolizes the resurrection. You know, he symbolizes the third eye uh, region as well as also the pituitary gland. You know, other names is Camiel, Suriel, and Haniel. All right? Then you have Remiel, which is the angel of thunder. He symbolizes joy or the throat chakra. Then you have Raphael, the angel of healing. All right? Um, it symbolizes healing, the heart chakra, which is another name for um, Rigbikiel. Then you have... um. Um, Zarach Chiel, which is the angel of the army. He symbolizes surrender, which is similar to the solar plexus. You have Raguel, the angel of the, fr- of the friend. He symbolizes repentance, the navel chakra. Then seven, you have Uriel, which is the angel of fire. All right? His name means the fire of God or the light of God. And, of course, fire is the physical manifestation of light. So the angel of the flame, the angel of Hades, it symbolizes um, salvation. Yeah, salvation. The base root chakra, which is the abode of the Kundalini Shakti, serpentine fire, consciously manifested and self-controlled in the human body. It is also known as prana or ra, which ra, other name is Hiru. All right? So this is the black Madonna and child. Because the Kundalini Shakti is all set. And the energy in which that drives it is Ra, which is Hiru. The baby Christ. So when you see um, in the over 200 countries of the statuettes or the famous paintings of the black Madonna and child, this is what is in reference to. Because the chakras actually are melanin centers also. Melanin is at the core of the endocrine glands, which are bundles of nerves, in which that produces hormones, which is also referred to as ductless glands. All right? Um, in the old, what I think is in the Old Testament, Numbers 21.8, it states that, And the Lord um, said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it up upon a pole. And that it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looks upon it, shall live. That's the Kundalini energy. All right? His other name, um, Uriel's other name is Ariel or Oriel, Suriel or Suriel or Puriel or Faniel, um, Razikiel, Nakiel, Naki. The serpent of God, Nakiel. So, this is where the serpent comes in at. It's talking about um, Uriel, the archangel. Um, That is um, the Hebrew name. And the ancient Egyptian name or ancient Tamarian or Kemetic name is Heru. His Latin name is Lucifer. The light bringer, the light being or light bearer, 
You know, matter of fact, when you go to the Dictionary of Angels, which includes the fallen angels, it states that he, um, Uriel is over um, Tartarasas, which means the keeper of hell, the chief of the angels set up over the torments of hell. And that position is alternate with Uriel at this office, and Uriel being the chief of the spirits who reside over Tartarus. So, this is why Christ's consciousness must be resurrected, or Haim Abeth, which is Heru M. Arket, which is symbolic to the Sphinx. The lower self is the body of the animal, which animates the human body, and the head symbolizes the higher self. So that is the separation of, or the merging, I should say, of the higher self and lower self attribute, in which that is shown or being de- um, depict- um, depicted as the Sphinx, or Hiram M. Oket, or Hiro M. Oket. Now, Now you understand that Heru or Hiram Abif must be reawakened. This is why within the Masonic lore, they say that Hiram Abif was knocked in the head by the three ruffians for dead and laid in the north. Well, Lower Egypt was the upper portion of Egypt or Africa on the map. Upper Egypt was the lower portion. So when you talk about laid in the north, actually you had to reverse the, the road. And so in that regard, um, upper Egypt would actually be going towards Ethiopia, Sudan, which was known as Kush, the land of Kush. All right, which is also Somalia nowadays. All right, and that resurrection must take place so that now you who go through the Masonic ritual can now be resurrected at a 90-degree perpendicular level. Hence, the Kundalini must go up the spine, a straight spine. And in martial arts, in particular in Qigong and Tai Chi, you tilt the pelvis forward as you stand in like a semi-horse stance with your feet shoulder width apart, and you straighten your spine so that the kundalini, as you raise it up through your movements and you pull up your anal muscles and your perineum, what is called the day exercise or the keiko exercise, as the women do, and you are drawing that energy up through the shishuna, which is the hollow area in the back, like you're sucking um, water through a straw, and you're raising that kundalini up, burn it through the ethereal threads, and as it burns through those threads, then you have the ability in order to take on the consciousness in which that is latent within those particular chakras or endocrine glands. So the energy moves up from the genitalia area, which in a sense, that's where the spirit dwells at, or the spiritual soul, which symbolizes here root. The soul principle. And you must raise that energy up, the spiritual soul or the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost or Set, the Mother, the Goddess, the Divine Mother Principle, the Black Mother, symbolically, the Black Madonna and Child, symbolically, up the spinal column, through the seven caves or caverns, until you reach the abode of Brahma or Osa. All right, which symbolizes the third ventricle, and which that the pineal gland overlooks, and reawaken or saw who is half asleep, also just as the kundalini was half asleep at the base of the spine or at the sacral bone area, and upon awakening, both produced through the merger, the divine higher self, which is also symbolic to Heru. So Heru symbolizes all seven conscious centers as one. So the Elohim 
which is known as the seven eyes of Allah, all together is one. So we went over those seven angels or archangels, which is Michael, Gabriel, Remiel, Raphael, um, Zarikiel, Raguel, Uriel. But all of them together, which are the seven Elohim, seven eyes of Allah, or the seven souls of Ra, is actually one. One. So um, within the teachings of Prophet Nubadr Ali, in the 101, it states basically that the seven Elohims created all that was, is, and forever will be. The other creators, the archangels, in which that formed the physical body into existence and exists as um, the various bodies after death. And the three higher selves, or the three aspects of the higher self in which that exists after death or survived death, is known as the Ba, the Ka, and the Aku, which would be similar to Michael, Gabriel, and um, Remiel, according to the Book of Enoch. And the Apocrypha, okay? So, this is the symbolism behind all of that. Now, I'm about to probably spook a lot of you out if I didn't already do it already. But um, there's another name for Hiru called Messin. Um, actually, it was known as Hiru Mess. And another name for um, Hiru was Caress or Caress Mess, which becomes the word Christmas, in which that the sun reaches its lowest point in the sky and stands still for three days and three nights, symbolic to the tomb. And then from December 21st to December 24th, going to December 25th, it resurrects and returns nine months later to be born from the Virgin Mary, which is symbolic to um, the Virgin month of September, which is Virgo. What that same astrological theology play is going on within your physical body. So that is symbolic to Jesus going to the depths of hell to gain the keys over death and hell from the devil. The devil, which is symbolic to the lower self. The lower self is the reflection of the higher self. Except that the lower self is murky ethers and it does not survive death. Matter of fact, it um, dissipates and returns to the realm of form, which is symbolic to the three lower chakras. And conditionally, the heart, in which that makes the four devils, according to um, the teachings of the 120 lessons. If you read uh, 1 through 14 in the Justice 10 lesson, um, it states, Why must Muhammad and any Muslim murder the devil? And what is the duty in regard to the four devils? Well, it speaks about the four devils. And those four devils are similar to four lower chakras, the heart chakra, the solar plexus, the navel chakra, and the root chakra. Those four basically dies or dissipates and returns to the realm of form. All right? That becomes the information for the planet. And if you are within your immortal body, then you no longer are confined to the planet. In other words, those are your mortal bodies. Your four devils are your mortal bodies. And that information returns to the realm of form because um, that is the information which that is brought back upon another incarnation or what is called reincarnation. Even though the reincarnation cycle um, is said to be over, about to be approached to be over, that is what that was symbolic to. Now, the three higher chakras, which is your throat chakra, your third eye, and your crown chakra, which is your body, your kind, your cool, glorified light body, those are your immortal bodies. And that survives death. Um, within consciousness, that would be symbolic to your super consciousness, your magnetic consciousness, and your infinite consciousness. And the four devils would be symbolic to the four lower chakras, also to the four lower states of consciousness, which is interpersonal consciousness, intrapersonal consciousness, life consciousness, and subconsciousness. Okay? So, you want to
going to be in your higher bodies in order to um, do what's called um, escape earth velocity, which is 7.8 um, hertz, which is similar to the heartbeat of the earth itself. All right? It's over 7.3 to 7.8 hertz. Um, it's rising. Um, and by doing so, you will be able to escape the earth velocity of gravity or which actually is centrifugal and centrifugal force, which is the push and pull um, energy upon the planet. And you'll be able to escape that in order to journey into other dimensions, realms, density levels, planets, stars, etc., based on your consciousness being higher than the third dimension, fourth dimension, which right now the planet Earth based on what is taking place with the um, solar flare activity. We're going into the photon belt. Um, we are coming out of the dark rift and going into the um, the other arm band of the photon belt. And we are moving closer towards the center of, this, of the sun called Alcyon, which is the central sun in the Milky Way galaxy, which is hundreds and times larger than our sun, and that energy is bombarding the planet along with um, us rotating 25,928 um, years around Sirius constellation, Canis, um, Canis Major, as well as also as we travel through the 12 zodiac signs, maybe 25,000 years or so. These 25,000 years all are symbolic to um, Elijah Muhammad and the teachings where he um, teach within the um, student enrollment as well as also within the 120 of the Nation of Gods on Earth where it states that um, that a Holy Quran is equivalent to 25,000 year renewal of history so right now we're going through a renewal of history that's what is taking place okay so When you study about um, Heru, Uriel, Lucifer, you will find these connections. While at the same time, the European Masonic, Eastern Star Orders, and etc. worship the devil, as we would say, which is Deva, which is a Vedic name for God, or rather Lucifer, and the and the um, bright and morning star. Now, Lucifer is the, um, as we said, the archangel Uriel, um, which personifies the universal life force energy concentrated within the root chakra. And if you read Revelation, the 22nd chapter, the 16th verse, it says Jesus is also referred to as the bright and morning star. All right? So there's two bright and morning stars. So Jesus, which is Christ, and Lucifer actually are brothers. They walk the same path, which is actually symbolic to polarity. One end of the polarity is the top of the spinal column, which would be at the top of the head, symbolic to Christ, and then um, the bottom portion, symbolic to Lucifer, um, or the devil, um, at the um, base of the spine, the sacral bone area, which is a tri um, downward triangular-shaped bone at the base of the spine, you know, crack of your behind. That's the abode of the Kundalini. Now, Jesus Christ, who symbolizes the Son of God, is the cosmic consciousness which illuminates the earthling vessel of Adam through the serpent, the Kundalini of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is the sexual genitalia or spinal column and nerves. And the serpent is the son of the son of man, also Lucifer. And like Jesus, is also coming on a cloud like the morning star. They are two extremes of the same pole, which is polarity, as we were saying. Now, one is called negative, descending energy, matter, you know, Lucifer, and the other is positive, ascending energy, spirit, Christ. Now, the symbolism of the spirit as masculine and the matter as feminine is symbolism purely and not tied to man and woman as their personal identities or said genders. Now, nevertheless, the spirit is a prototype of a male or king, 
and every man is therefore a lord of spiritual light. Matter, which symbolizes the mother principle, is templified by the woman figures. Thus, every woman is therefore um, sunk in material aims. Even so, the mind or soul is each, and each actually is sexless. But based on the way that the stories break down, they always give a masculine and feminine component to these stories, and they switch it back and forth. But we know that originally, if you get the book by um, Dr. Suzar, um, the black the black great mother, she breaks down, which is actually a part of um, whitewash, um, blackout the whitewash, um, which is um, one of the most phenomenal books that you never get your hands on, and I recommend that you get your hands on that. Um, hopefully, we'll have Dr. Suzar on this show soon because. We are like kindred spirits, seriously. Um, I was writing my book, Out of the Womb, End of the Mind, same as she was writing her um, book, and we was coming to the to damn near the same conclusions, and I had to go back and rewrite my book several times in order to, um, for it won't be so much like us. But you get that book, Black Out the White Wash, um, by Dr. Suzar, S-U-Z-A-R, Phenomenal book. Phenomenal. All right? Now, hopefully you're getting all the books that I'm telling you, that I've been telling you about, I'm on here. Now, how do you master this lower self and higher self? But before we even get there, let's continue on going through, um, like, for example, let me read something from out the 102s. This is starting at um, the 66 key. What is the devil sometimes called? The lower self. 67. How many selves are there? Two. 68. Name them. Higher self, lower self. Now, this is coming from the Holy Quran Circle 7. 69. What people represents the higher self? The angel who protects the holy city of Mecca. 70. What people represents the lower self? Those who are cast out of the holy city and those who accept their teachings. Or well, what is the higher self? 71. And the higher self is the mother of virtues and the harmonies of life and breathes justice, mercy, love, and right. Now, see, all of that comes up under the laws of Mayat. Those are attributes of Mayat, justice, mercy, love, and right. Just like love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. That's Mayat. That's the Mayatian law, the virtues of life. And it says the mother of virtues, which is Mayat, and the harmonies of life which is also her consort, which is Tahuti. So they embedded the Egyptian theology within the keys. 72, can the highest soul pass away? Answer, no. 73, why? Because it is a law in man. So you have Ura, a law in man, a law in man, God in man. 74, what does the highest soul breed? Excuse me, what does the lower self breed? Hatred, slander, lewdness, murder, theft, and everything that harms. 75, what did the higher self say to the lower self at one time when he met him? Where are you going, Satan? 76, what was the answer that the lower self gave to the higher self? I am going to and fro on the earth seeking whom I may devour. 77, has he finished his task of devouring? 78, yes. When was his time declared out? When he nailed Jesus on the cross. All symbolic. When the Kundalini energy raises up through the 33 vertebrates, symbolic to the crucifixion of Christ, you murdered the lower self. And you entered the kingdom of God. Luke 17, 21. Do you not know that the kingdom of God is within you? You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, look here nor there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. As well as also, um, 1 Corinthians 3.16. Do you not know that your body is the, um, the temple of God? So, this is about mastering earth and heaven. Matter and spirit simultaneously. That's the paradox. And stories stemming from Zoroastrian teachings well, from the ancient Kemetic teachings to the Zoroastrian teachings to Judaism, 
to Christianity, to Islam. All of these stories always speak about the conflict of higher self and lower self. Within the Bible, they give you the story of Cain and Abel, which is also found within the Quran. They give you the story of um, Jacob and Esau over the birthright. They give you the um, of Isaac and Ishmael of their mothers, Sarah and Hagar. They give you the battle of Judas and Jesus in the New Testament. So this battle between higher self and lower self always is symbolic through those particular stories. It's found within the Enuma Elich of Enki and Enlil. Okay, so we we have to understand this, and this is where Ishtar comes from. Ishtar is is all is um all set, you know, same stories but told mildly different within um another dialect, another language. This is how you know that the truth remains the same because of the stories. You know, people are trying to you know utilize. Um, language only, linguistics only. But when you go to the stories, they give you the um, nearly the identical story. This is the mastery of this. Now, that same information is found in the 101 um, keys, known as the um, the questionnaire for Moorish children or the questionnaire for Moorish Americans. Except in the 101, it starts at 65 and go to 78. Now, you will see in the depiction on the now divinity, happy in dual form, and he's binding this semi symbol. One is holding on the one is on the left, holding the symbol of a papyrus plant, symbolic to the lower self, and the one on the right is um, binds with a lotus flower, which symbolizes the higher self. Now, this same story is basically found where Jesus is put in between the two thieves um, or the two male factors. And one on the left said, well, if you be the Christ, don't you get yourself down from here? And the one on the right said, well, I believe that you is the Christ. Remember me the day that you entered the paradise. So one said negative, one said positive. But Christ was symbolic. He was in the middle, which symbolized neutrality. And it is said that um, this day you will be with me in heaven, talking to the one on the right. And then he gave up the ghost. Hence, I send it back to his father, which art in heaven. All that is symbolic to the Kundalini energy raising up between the two um, sacral nerves. You have one on the right, one on the left. Within the um, ancient comedic text, it is symbolic to Arset and Nephet. Those two nerves are symbolic to Nephet, um, Arset and Nephet. All right, they're called the Eda and the Pingala within the Sanskrit teachings. There's some other and Ninlil uh, within um, the Inuit Lich teachings. All right, so this is what is going on. We have to come to clarity and understanding of these um, sciences. And so as the energy comes up, um, of course, within your Bible, it says that Jesus got crucified on Mount Calvary, which is Mount Golgotha within Aramaic. Well, the word Golgotha, according to the Strong Coconius, um Bible, means skull, place of the skull. So the crucifixion of the lower self takes place in the skull. All right? That's where it takes place at. So this means that the um, duality of spirit and matter, the temporal and the transcendent, becomes unified um, in such a way that one's temporal nature dissolves into the transcendental reality and one's higher nature. This is according to um, Egyptian yoga by um, Dr. Muata Ashby, um, and that's what um, that is symbolic to. Now, the god of the um, Nile and, you know, ancient Tamaria or Tamaria or Kemet or Egypt, was called Hap or Happy. You know, he's the spirit that operates through the body of river water, which is similar to the spinal fluid. 
All right? That's what that's symbolic to. Now, this is where we find out these particular terms that people get confused about in religion because the DT hat was recognized um, to have twin aspects, as we just finished talking about. And hat flowed through the northern part of the country. He is called hat mat, meaning hat up the north. And when he flowed through the south, he was called hat. All right? Um, so this is what these two deities or two symbols of hat symbolizes, the lower and higher self. This is where we find a key at because the origin of the word Hatmat, which is also, um, he was in Mu, which is water. Mu Hatmat is where we get the name from or the title for happy, meaning waters of the northern now. So hence, Mu Hatmat become Muhammad. This is why Hatmat or Mu Hatmat also had the ancient title Sarem. And Sarem becomes the word Salam or Salam. Islam, and Sarim means the shrine or sanctuary of the netter. Rim means tear of Ra, or a child of Ra. So it's the sanctuary or shrine of the child of Ra. That's what Sharim or Sarim or Islam means. The word shrine and sanctuary also translate to peace. Peace of the child of Ra. And Ra, of course, is Ur-Ra, which is Allah, which is Allah. Or Elah within Hebrew. Now, you do more study and you find the origin of the word Islam, as we said. All right? Because the R and the L's are interchangeable linguistically. So, Sarim changes to Salam. So, it is said that Muhammad brings Sarim, which is Islam to the people. So, yes, that is true, coming from the ancient comedic breakdown. But remember, if you read the Hadith by Bakari, it specifically states, who was a Russian um, convert into Islam, um, who wrote the Hadith, which are the words of man, he specifically states that um, Ahmed was the name of the Prophet Muhammad before he took on the name Muhammad, in which that he did not take that name on until after he came in contact with his Ethiopian roots. And we know that Ethiopia or Kush, his Kush roots, Kushites were the um, were the people, the earliest people of Egypt. Okay? So, then when you look at the word Muslim, it's taken from the word Misrim, or Misra. And we said about Mis earlier, that that's Hebrew Mis, which is the word Mes or Mos, which becomes the word Moses, or Thutmosis, Upmosis, Kamosis, Ramosis, which becomes Ramesses. All right, Moses in your Bible. This is where this name stems from. It was, it was talking about an initiation. Those who go to go through a particular initiation takes on the word Mes. This is the anointing. This is where the word mess is short for Messiah or messenger. One who's anointed. The anointing takes place symbolically by um, anointing the person's head with crocodile fat from Sebek. All right? Sebek symbolized the crocodile. And you would take the fat from Sebek and put it on the forehead. Similar to the way in which that um, in some Christian churches or, or some type of, yeah, um, in some Christian churches, they still put um, oil on the forehead, even to this day, symbolic to the anointing. Well, whenever you get anointed like that, you become a Messiah, by definition. All right? So, Misra, um, in Arabic and Hebrew, is called Misr, or Misra'in. All right, and Misr is the derivative of the um, Coptic word Misori, which is derived from Misra or Misura, meaning birth of Ra. 
So this anointing is what brings forth the birth of Ra. And internally, we're talking about the external principle of being anointed on the forehead, but internally, um, the part that they anoint as the forehead is actually toward the third eye. Hence, when the Kundalini raises up um, in between um, the eyebrows, hence you see the serpent in between there, or the tiaras or the crowns of the pharaohs and pharaohs, you will see um, that energy, that Kundalini energy come up. Also, you will see a vote of um, a, um, a vulture next to the snake, symbolic to the eater of the lower self, so that the higher self can be preserved, which is symbolic to the snake because the snake can shed its skin. So that symbolizes a rebirth or a renewal. Right? That's what that's symbolic to. Just like a caterpillar in a cocoon. All right? Be transformed into a butterfly. So this is a title of Ra operating through the sun during the summer solstice. All right? Hence a Muslim or a Muslim, which is Arabic, is derived from the uh, Metuneta, the Egyptian word Mesrem. And remember, the R's and L's are interchangeable. So Mesrem becomes Meslem. And according to the Rapa um, Papera, people are born mess of the tear of Ra or Ramus, which comes from the eye of Ra. All right. Now, if you go to, um, according to Brother J. Blakely Bay, who's one of the past um, Supreme Grand um, Grand Sheiks or Grand um, Supreme Grand Advisor and Moderator, I'm up under um, Charles Kirkman Baker's group. In the oral statements and prophecies, he states that the Egyptian adept um, Prophet Noble Ali stated that Muslims are not made, they are born. So this is what we are talking about. In other words, you are born because now you have come in contact with Yah yourself. So like we said, Heru M. Arket, which is Hiram Abif, means Heru, Horus, in the horizon. Remember, the horizon also is from the word Horus. Or hero. And Horus means sun, consciousness, wakefulness. It also means light or enlightenment. Heru represents the conquest of good over evil. The higher self and the lower self are aspects of the same being, both representing the conflicting aspects of the human mind. When the lower self is mastered and placed in the service of the higher self, then the resurrection is a fact. This is conveyed in the Sphinx. It represents the embodiment of the initiatic ideals, all right? The infinite energy and the life force of nature, symbolized by the animal body, set, commanded by the intuitive intellect, symbolized by the human head, Heru. All right? So this is why Heru has so many different names, because it's based on the different states of consciousness and awakefulness or awareness in which that um, it goes through in order to come back into being the higher self from out of the depths of hell. As we said, Jesus had to go into hell to get the keys from from um, Satan or the devil slash Lucifer over hell and death. All right, this is what this is all symbolic to. Now, Like we said, there's also components on which that symbolizes the same aspect within you, um, the sima, or also the two lungs or the two nostrils, all right, and the trachea representing the dichotomy of the human nature, consolidating within the breath, which symbolizes this singular um, awakeness or consciousness, which equals shu, shu is the ancient Egyptian deity in which that personify air. In other words, the breath of life. Hence the reason why Jesus' name is Yahshua in Aramaic and Hebrew, or Yahushua. The word Shu is embedded inside of it, just like within the Yoruba traditions of Yeshua Legba, which symbolizes the opening of the way. So the breath is the opening of the way. The breath is also what formed the physical body into existence because the breath Symbolizes push and pull, centrifugal and um, centripetal force. And centrifugal and centripetal force is what holds your physical body together. That's what maintains your composition, your physical composition. 
So we're talking about the consolidation um, of the breath, which is the singular awareness and consciousness, which is Shu, or Yahshua, which is Ishua Legba, um, the God of the four cross of the, of the crossroads, you know, which symbolizes that cross or that physical body, you know, and then, you know, the two lungs symbolizes it, Ruin Set, Inky, and Lil, Cain, and Abel, the two thieves, um, um, the Eden and the Pingala, you know, um, you know, being crucified, you know, Jesus being crucified between the two thieves, or Jibreel and Iblis, positive and negative, good and devil, God, you know, um, good and evil, God and the devil, you know, that perspectives, polarities existing within all of us. So once the breath, which is the life force, singular consciousness awakening, has harmonized um, with these two opposing forces, we achieve a level of peace, which is Islamism or Islam, for ourselves, internal peace, as well as being able to love our brothers and sisters instead of hate. So it comes through the science of breath. And within a 24-hour span, we breathe 25,928 times, or 20 times, uh, which is the same as us rotating through um, through the 12 zodiac signs with the solar system and the solar system of the sun, as well as also going around Sirius A and Sirius B, Sirius C, um, Ya, um, Polo Tolo, Ziggy Tolo, and this takes place that we learn to love. All right, now, the Sumerians, the Babylonians, the Moors, the Kamal, the Omex, the Dravidians, the Abyssinians, Indo Kushites, all same people, all had the same culture that was based on the principles of Simatawi, which is now known as Islamism, the old time religion. And I'm just using this because I'm trying to get the Moors in order to understand this from that particular perspective. For those who are listening who aren't so called Moors, then you'll get it from the ancient Egyptian terminology or the biblical terminology or the Quranic terminology, whatever. Um, you can get it, get it. That's why I'm speaking it from so many different angles and ways so that you can get it. That's the point, getting it. All right, so uh, one of the best things that you can do um, actually is um, master the science of breath, you know. But before we get to that, let's go back into some more science about these science, um, these seven um Souls or the seven souls of Ra, which are the seven Elohims. Now, um, the seven souls would derive of oh, this is according to Gerald Massey, Ancient Egypt, the Light of the World. He states that the Egyptian, um, that the um, seven souls also is from his um, book, also from his book, the Gerald Massey Lectures. He says the seven souls was derived from the individualized fatherhood, which was represented by the father Atum. From the first from the first time in the Egyptian mythology, Atum became equivalent to the Buddhist Atma, which of course is Adam within your Bible, the creative soul. Adam of um Atum of the seventh creation represents the eternal. He inspired the breath of life, everlasting, and is called the one soul God without change. At this stage of attainment the soul exudes that it is created forever, and it is a so beyond time, the deceased exclaimed, Shu caused me to shine as a living Lord and to be made the seventh when he came forth. I am the firstborn of Shavik, and Shavik means the seventh fold or seventh, the type of attainment at the seventh of the total series. This is he who came out sound in death. The unknown is his name. The mystery of the soul made by the gods is described as a being as it was, self-existent, i.e., of the permanent entity obtained at last. It is called the reserved soul, the engendered of the gods who provided it with its shapes. All right? It is the greatest of secrets in the inscriptions of Una, record of the past, to eight. These seven souls of the Pharaoh are spoken of as being invoked more than all the gods. These were the divine ancestors, the men whom was worshipped in Egypt by the Shujinhar, the Shu in Har, the Shus in Har, which are the followers of Horus, 
Now, the word shushan har is the word chosen. And this is what the Jews say, that they are the chosen people. They're saying that they're the shushan har, the followers of, Her- of Horus or Heru. Of course, we know that's not true, but this is what they claim. And thus, by claiming it, they now have rulership over the finances um, of the planet and control the bank system. Now, for 1,300 years before the time of Menes, um, being seven in number, there were identical with the seven Manus, the Rishis, the Elohims, um, and the other um, have done met, found elsewhere. This origin was in this wise. It says the seven was preceded the eighth, being looked at upon as the generator of the one enduring soul, the Horus, the Christ, or the Buddha, being a form of the ancestors or Mandis, Manis, the nature of which has to be partly determined by the number seven. They never were the spirits of the individual ancestors. They originated as the seven human elementaries, not as ghosts. They made their appearance in a group of seven. These seven being correlated and combined with the seven elemental forces recognized in external nature, we have the perplex mixture of elementaries, elementaries and elements on which subject we are told the adapts are very different or defected. All right? So, this is what that is symbolic to, the number seven in that regard. Now, when we talk about um, the breath, we know that the breath affects the whole body. It affects the nervous system, the heart, the digestive system, muscles, sleep, energy levels, concentration, memory, and much more. Now, breathing is also our largest system of waste removal. But most people don't know that 70% of the waste produced within the body is supposed to be removed by breathing. 20% removed by your skin, and 10%, which remains for the kidneys and the digestive system. In other words, through urination and defecation. So we not only breathe oxygen, which is the eighth element on the periodical chart, but also that life energy, qi, as it is called within China, qi in Japan, prana within um, India, or the Holy Spirit, which is ruach in Christianity, in Hebrew. So... um. We know that the eighth element on the particle chart is oxygen, but it has eight protons, eight neutrons, eight electrons. And as we broke down before, if you get the um, Kabbalistic writings of Alistair Crowley, he states that 888 symbolizes Jesus Christ. That's the numeral within geometria, which is numerology, Hebrew numerology, for Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ symbolizes this prana or this chi or key energy. All right? So not only does it move from the base of the spine as it moves up, the same principle of the mother and child is still there. However, the child becomes hero elder, transformed from hero babe, Jesus the babe, to become a hero elder, which is when he tells his mother that he has to go be about his father's business. So this is when he somewhat separates from that feminine aspect in that regard, and he never does really... Um, separate, you know, that much about the story because actually it is feminine energy. But this is the way that the story is given so that we can have some type of understanding concerning the forces of the body. All right. Now, we know that breathing is the foundation for healing energy. Matter of fact, the longer exhales also triggers the vagus nerve, which is one of the 12 pair cranial nerves or the 24 elders that sits around um, the throne of God, which is the lamb, which is your pineal gland, which the soul is embedded inside of to be awakened. Some call it the spirit, Ruach. Now, or Ra. And Ra exists throughout the whole body. All right? So when we talk about soul, we talk about from the lowest aspects of spirit or animation to its highest aspects of spiritual soul to its um to its highest aspect, which is um, at the top of the crown of the head. All right. So one of the meditative breathing exercises is basically to close your eyes, place your hand over your heart chakra, then breathe rapidly in and out of your nose for about 20 to 30 seconds and make it audible. And this is called bellow breathing. 
All right. And then the breath normally focuses all the attention on your you focus all your breath all your focus on your breath. And then you repeat the steps two or three times. All right. So you close your eyes, place your hands on your heart, breathe rapidly in and out of your nose for about twenty, thirty seconds, make it audible, and this is called bellow breathing. And you would do this two or three times. All right. That's one of the exercises. Um, of course, you can um, do the Dantian breathing. The key to using the Dantian um, breathing is to help heal yourself, is to um, inhale gently all the way down into the Dantian, which is your navel chakra, or some say about an inch or two below your navel. And as you inhale, you pay attention to your navel chakra or your Dantian. And since your breath entering, filling the lower abdomen, and you will feel how your abdomen naturally expands, so it will expand like a balloon. And if you like, you can put your hands on your belly, all right, to help attract the um, the energy there. And as you exhale, you will sense um, any tension and toxins going out of the breath as you um, as your abdomen um, naturally contracts. So you will learn to be attentive to the vital, warm, and vibration of the breath energy remaining in your abdomen as you exhale. All right, so feel. I feel it being absorbed into your cells as you exhale waste product upward and out through your nose or mouth. You know what I'm saying? So don't force it. You know, it's only about being aware, and that's the key, using your awareness. Now, you can do um, another form of it, which is to stand or sit in a chair with your spine straight. Bring both hands over the um, lower abdomen, breathe in and out through your nose, and then you will inhale and visualize like a gold ball of energy, like a sun, growing in your lower dantian. And as you exhale, you will visualize the golden ball intensifying its glow. All right, now with each breath, you will see that the light is growing brighter and brighter. You will do this 36 times. All right, and you will practice at least three to five minutes. Ten minutes, ideally, throughout the day. Okay? And what what it does is recharge your internal energies. All right? Now, if you don't understand this, for the Moors, let's go to the Holy Quran Circle 7 of the Moors Divine National Movement. Um, It says, in Chapter 2, Education of Mary and Elizabeth in Zoan, Egypt, it says, and on verse 18 it said, teach them that Allah and man are one, but that through cardinal thoughts and words and deeds, man tore himself away from Allah, debased himself. Verse 19, teach that the holy breath will make them one again, restoring harmony and peace. Once again, teach that the holy breath will make them one again, restoring harmony and and peace. I've been to many um, Moorish lectures, been to many Moorish meetings, and I can say that one of the things in which that is lacking within the temples is them teaching this science in which that is said right here to teach. And who they're talking about? They're talking about the revealers of light. The revealers of the light are supposed to teach the students or the neophytes or those members or who are coming into the knowledge of information, wisdom, understanding, to teach them that the Holy Breath will make them one again, restoring harmony and peace. So you must master the science of, of breath. And few of us breathe deep enough to oxygenate the blood. And these um, following breathing vibratory exercises that we just gave, actually the previous ones, are highly concentrated. And, you know, those exercises help, you know. As a matter of fact, um, you actually can look at the sun to expel toxins. All right, this is done, um, you know, between the hours of um, 7 to 8 in the morning when the sun is just coming up over the horizon. All right? And the sun actually can be at eye level. 
and you would sit, you know what I'm saying, um, with your um, head leaned slightly back, and you would inhale through your nose and envision the sun's energy entering through your body, circulating down the front of the spine and wrapping around the front of the body via the tip of the spine. Then you would exhale and envision the energy moving up the front of the body and spewing out of the mouth in the form of filthy black smoke. And you would do this, you repeat this 12 to 24 times. Now, this is the same exercise that they were showing you in the movie The Green Mile with John Coffey, when he would take in um, the negative energy of the individual with the disease, and then he would have to remove it from out of his body before he gets sick. Guess what this is all symbolic to? All right? This is 12 within the Tibetan um, schools, the Shaolin Temple schools, the Buddhist schools, the Taoists, as well as also um, within the Rosicrucians. So we must master the signs of breath. All right? Um, we always talk about the one in which that expands the auric field, in which that is um, the 636 and the 771, um, in which that if you breathe in for a count of six, you will re, um, retain that breath for a count of three, then exhale for a count of six, and then retain it again for three. And you will do that 100 times. Was well, the same with 7171. You would breathe in for a count of seven, hold it for one count, breathe out for a count of seven, and hold it for one count. All right? That expands your orbit field, which is normally three feet outside of your physical body, all right? And which that expands it to over 15 feet outside of you, strengthening it, sealing off the um, leaks and the holes within your orbit field, making you feel more energetic and alive and more powerful. All right? So you have to learn how to absorb tremendous amounts of um, surplus of chi energy. And that is done through the pranayama or through the pranic breathing. So after the pranic breathing is accomplished, you simply have to protect your energy um, or project your energy to a person who's af- uh, who's afflicted or either to yourself, to a particular afflicted area or part. All right? These are the keys. These are the keys. All right, we're going to go and see if there's any questions. Let me pull up here. I don't see any questions as of yet. Let me see if there's anything in the chat room, anything going on. All right, peace, peace, everyone in the chat room. All right, um, there's no questions that I'm seeing in the chat room, so um, I guess um, we continue on. There's no questions coming up in the live lines. All right. Now, Now, you will have to master one of the things that once you build up your energies, then you will want to also um, master this with a partner, all right, if you're a male with a female, female with a male, all right, um, because it's only through those two components in which that life can get here, and that's one of the purposes of sex is to reproduce. The other is to regenerate or revitalize or re-energize or rejuvenate yourself because we know that Every time you have sex, you don't have children. So uh, what would be the other pu- um, purpose of having sex is to rejuvenate yourself, regenerate yourself. So you have to learn how to master that. So by practicing the um, pranic breathing exercises, um, so when you do the Tantra Kriya Yoga, now what happens when you practice Tantra Kriya Yoga, which I tell all my students, they need to um, get the book by my teacher, Grand Master Sanyata Saraswati. Need to get his book, um, The Jewel and the Lotus. But it speaks about the fact that um, the breath pulls the Shakti or magnetic energy up into the spine, charging the electromagnetic properties of the cerebral spinal fluid, which 
which allows the Kundalini to move up the spine. So as the brain bathes in this charged fluid, the um, nervous system is transformed, and you are awakened to a new consciousness. And the Kundalini is the life force consciousness or sexual energy. And as it moves upward, it enlivens or enlightens you. So during normal sex, which is beast or monkey sex, as we call it, um, during normal sex, the, the energy flows downward and drains you. So one of the keys um, to mastering the lower self and higher self components is through sex, in which that that is that is the actually through the practice in which that happens the quickest is actually through practice tantric kriya yoga. That's how you reach spiritual enlightenment the quickest is through that. You don't reach it through abstaining. Um, uh, abstaining from sex or being celibate. By doing so, that might take you 20 years in order to master the Kundalini, in which that, um, you know, can happen within a few um, sessions of the sexual practice. And, of course, this has to be with someone that you have feelings for, that you love, that you care for. You know, we're not talking about just friction, sex, you know, just a good release. It's about um, feelings um, involved because the feeling symbolizes your intent. And the more feelings or emotion that you, energy and emotion that you can put towards a thing, the quicker that it manifests. It manifests. Tantra means liberation through expansion, weaving together energies, Shakti, consciousness, Shiva, is a spiritual path for obtaining union with the divine. It is a practice in which that we accept and use the nature of the mind, body, senses, sexuality, and feelings to help us evolve spiritually. Emotions are suppressed appropriately and authentically, and a sense of belonging and connection to all that is. All right? So emotions are expressed appropriately and authentically. When they are, then this can happen. However, we are in a society where we are taught not to express ourselves emotionally, particularly the men. And so we shut ourselves down from utilizing this kutalini force or energy and be reaching the highest state of consciousness doing a sexual act. And as we end up repressing it, and there's a report in which that states that at least 65% of the women have been molested or raped or sexually abused in some type of um, way, shape, form, or fashion. And so uh, as well as also the men too, Okay, of course, the statistics aren't that high, you know, because the men don't speak about it. But um, in both regards, what we have is repression, repression, um, suppression, oppression, depression of the Kundalini energy, which is the mother goddess spirit or power in which that formed the physical body into existence. So actually, we do a disservice, and in a sense, we are blaspheming the Holy Spirit, which the Bible speaks out against not to do. All right, so um, access to the universal knowledge, that's what it gives us, living in an ongoing state of bliss, a state of belonging and connection to all there is. Tantra encourages us to be aware of and to enjoy the world we live in. By expanding our awareness, we stretch the boundaries of our self-definition and discover our higher nature. And as we begin to experience our own divine nature, we recognize it in others and all. All right, you can learn to amplify and transmute sexual energy, becoming the choreographer of your life and energy. All right, lovemaking becomes a form of communication or communion, learning to be intimate, learning to um, connect at the heart, mind, as well as sexually, Open, opening and transforming into a deeper bond, transforming lust into love, achieving an internal balance of your inner female male aspects, which is yin and yang, or shiva and shakti, or set and or saw. The left brain of the, of the um, left hemisphere of the brain being male, masculine, or analytical, linear, verbal, or, um, the right feminine um, hemisphere of the brain being intuitive, holistic, sensual, practical. With practice, we learn to use both aspects synergistically or synergistic, um, synergistically which basically means to synergize both, to combine. So early societies were matriarchal, while most recently the masculine aspect has dominated. The patriarchal society has dominated. 
However, now the goddess is reawakening. All right, and we move from out the um, age of Kali Yuga, and we are in now into the um, age of Sada Yuga. All right, so Tantra um, emphasizes the female um, principle of intuitive sensuality, the capacity for nurturing, spiritual awakening through sexual arousal, in which that is to save the earth from its current self-destructive course. This life, this long repressed feminine consciousness must now come within balance with the um, masculine force or focus of science and technology. The hormones produced during sexual arousal are the real elixir of youth. By prolonging the arousal state in lovemaking or self-pleasure, you bathe your, um, your body cells in this youth-maintaining hormones, recycling the energy, using it for increased vitality and self-healing, clearing karma, karma as unconscious emotional residue stored in the body from incidences which the lessons were not or were um, incompleted or were not learnt from. Now, the body being the temple of the soul or God realizes the old trauma trapped and creating space for um, creating space for more joy and having fully activated sexual energy being fully integrated and living in the present moment, the now. All right, and masters have um, described enlightenment as a perpetual orgasmic state. All right, so this is why you have to get the Tantra Create Yoga book um, by my teacher, Julian Lotus, by Sanyala Saraswati, you know, and um, also find him. He's in, um, pull up his website, which is www.shindao, um Monastery. I think it's Shen Dao, um, S-H-E-N, or T-A-O, or either just put his name into the engine search, Sanyata Saraswati. That's S-U-N-Y-A-T-A-S-A-R-A-S-W-A-T-I. All right, so um, these are the sciences. Let's see here if we got any more we got any questions? All right. Um, let me see here. Okay, one of the questions was, will the chemtrails send our ability to breathe and fully get the energy we need? Um, it can if you're outside breathing in it. Um, what I suggest is get, um, get an air um, purifier in your home. You know, to um, to um, cut down on the ORP levels. All right, oxygen um, rate of um, rate of production. Um, you want the ORP levels in your home in the negative, which means negative ions are being produced within, um, which is the um, air molecules. And that's what you need to take in is negative. You don't want the air to be positive. And one of the byproducts of the chemtrails is actually having the air increase in um, the positive ORP levels, and you don't want that. You want it negative. So get an air purifier and um, in your home and use that. And, of course, um, you do your breathing exercises morning, afternoon, evening, three hours before you go to bed. All right? That would be the best thing to do. All right, um, let me see what else here. Got another question. All right, someone said that you're seeing, um, recently seeing rainbow halos around the sun. Um, the reason for that is because um, the rain, rainbow symbolizes water mist in the air, and that's what causes those particular seven aspects of the um, light spectrum is um, water or mist. And so there's a lot of mist and a lot of reflective um a lot of reflective properties in the air. Because chemtrails are made up of aluminum and barium and aluminum is being the main ingredient. And aluminum is a reflective substance. So, um that's one of the reasons. Also, um, as I said, drink um good water, alkaline water. That's that is essential. 
you know, um, besides for breath, if we break it down into common sense terms, then, of course, um, the average person can only go about three minutes without breathing. They can go about a week and a half to two weeks without water, and they can go about um, a month to 40 days without eating. So the most important thing is the mastery of breath, and then, of course, comes the water, then the food. All right, it has to be in that category. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of chemtrails going on because they are, they, they are mastering and controlling the weather. I gave out an illustration earlier that here, three days ago, it was 75 degrees. The next day, it snowed. The next day, it went back up to 65 to nearly 70 degrees and melted away all the snow. Today, it was 70 degrees, once again. So this whole winter, the average temperature hasn't dipped below 60 degrees on the majority of the days here in North Carolina. But two days ago, it snowed. The day after, not a speck of snow in sight. And it snowed over an inch. Over an inch of snow was on the ground. That stuck. But the next day, because of the temperature rose, and you got to understand, the temperature is being, is being affected naturally by the solar flare activity in which that is taking place because we're in the year of the solar flares. All right, so that's natural. However, the chemtrails are not natural. So what they're trying to do is control the temperature and control the weather climate. This is why when I've gone all over the world, I've gone to Canada, I've gone to London, I've gone to um, Mexico, in all those areas, chemtrails. So this is not just a United States conspiracy. This is a worldwide conspiracy through all of the governments. And obviously the United States or whoever came up with the idea told these governments that it would be wise if they um, sprayed this particular chemical into the skies in order to protect from the onslaught of the solar flare activity. But really what they're doing is stopping the energies from trying to stop the energies. It's a feeble attempt, but that's what they're trying to do, stop the energies from coming in in order to change our DNA. This is why these reptilians, I'm talking about those on the reptilian mind state, what is called a, um, the, um, the brain stem, the reptilian brain, um, which, is, uh, which activates the first and second chakra. That's about it. And they can't reach above that. This is why um, they don't want us to ascend beyond them because they lose their control. They will lose the control. You know? So, this is, this is, um, this, this is, this is what is going on. You know? Now, let me see here. What else is on? Another question? All right. Someone asked me about Controlling your straw man. And brother said he knows off the topic, but he knows that one of the cats that deals with it. All right. Um, simple. You do an affidavit claim of lien. It's not necessary to do a UCC, even though um, if you have businesses or corporations or um, and you want to protect your property and your assets and you don't have a temple in which that you're part of in order to put your property and assets under the temple's name, if you choose to do so, uh, we recommend that you do an affidavit claim of lien with an attachment of a collateral listing of all your property and assets. And you can also do a um, security agreement, private agreement, whole homeless indemnity clause with a collateral listing, um, as well as also a UCC-1 financial statement and an addendum, as well as also a UCC attachment, affidavit, as well as an affidavit, um, copyright, trademark, trade name, a negative avertment, which basically is a denial of corporate status, as well as a bond for discharge. And you would do several other forms or bonds, such as the private bond set-off, um, civil bond certificate, a charge back, a bill of exchange, a registered bill of exchange, and you would have all of this sent to Timothy Geithner, United States Secretary of Treasury, and you will ask them to open and activate your UCC trust account so that you can discharge, set off, and uh, do acceptance for value. Most people just do it acceptance for value, not knowing that that can come back on you if you have not followed those particular steps of um, how to um, ask Timothy Guyton, who's the United States Secretary of Treasury, to activate those particular on that particular account for you, which is um, your Social Security 
card without the numbers as well as with the RB number that you get through, um, which is the red tab that you would get through the um, U.S. Postal Service or United States Postal Service, um, in which that also is the IMF, which is the prepaid levy bond number, which is the number on the back of your Social Security card, which is attached to the 12 Federal Reserve Banks um, throughout um, the states. Um, which that um, if you have A through L, which is the first letter on the back of your Social Security card, so you have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, um, all 12 of those um, denotes the different states in which that the Federal Reserves are located in, and you need to find their routing numbers. And you can use the routing number, your Social Security card number, front and back, and your birth certificate, which is um, you will have a certificate value um by Timothy Geithner, and you can use the state file number on the birth certificate, and those numbers along with the RB number that you get from the Federal Reserve, from the um, United States Postal Service, you will use as the numbers to discharge all your debts. All right, so that's basically what would be going on with that. All right, um, let me see what else, another question here. Hopefully that answered the question for you. Um, so, yeah, by doing UCC1, what you would want to do is actually put, um, you actually want to put your debtor, debtor name um, in the top portion and then in the secure party portion, um, you will put your indigenous appellation because your indigenous appellation does not have a birth certificate attached to it. And so you can actually put that into a trust. You can make up a trust do the affidavits on the trust and get the first sentence, last page uh, filed at the Register of Deeds. And that's what you want to do with all of those documents that I made mention of is to get them um, filed at the Register of Deeds before sending them over to Timothy Geithner. And then you can discharge mortgage, car debt, um, car notes, I should say, car loans, student loans, et cetera. All right, um, we got another question here. All right, um, Brother Selfborn 360 said that he noticed that a blimp flying in circles under the chemtrails um, lines. Um, so he got the binoculars, and the blimp said the United States Navy. The United States Navy. Okay, interesting. All right, Brother um, um, Robert Warren, he's saying that He's seen it um C dash one thirty flying around in circles in Greensboro, North Carolina. All right. Oh yeah, the pure trust? No, what you want is irrevocable trust. Irrevocable trust. That's what you want. Some put some do it in express trust, but irrevocable trust is the best. All right. Oh, yeah. Affirmations, breathing. There we go. Yeah, be back on the topic, Yashira. It's all right. We're going to get to you. <laughs> we bring it back to focus. I got you. All right. Um, of course, some of the affirmations in which that you can do um, for those who are into the Egyptian, um, you can do Nuke Poop Nuke, N U K P U N U K. Nuke Poop Nuke, which means. I am that which that I am, which is the same as within Hebrew, Ia Asha Ia, Ia Asha Ia, which means I am that which that I am. So, of course, in the book of Exodus, it speaks about um, Moses was asking God, well, whom shall I say he sent me? And, of course, um, it is um, God said, Ia Asha Ia, I am that which that I am. All right, so, Nuke Puk Nuke can be used, Nuke Puk Ray can be used. All right, so these are some of the affirmations that you can do. Of course, in the Sanskrit, you can do Om Mighty Pat Me Hum. Om Mighty Pat Me Hum. All right, you can do that. You can do just simply Om. Right, anything which that you can use to stop your mind from all the nonsense and chatter that it does in order to calm your mind down so that you can actually go within all right. Um, you can do um, within the Sufi T 
teachings or Islam. Um, you can do um, the various names, the 99 attributes of Allah. All right? La ilaha illallah wa tuhula siddiq All right, which means um, Allah is alone and has no partners. And all of the prophets are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the apostles are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All right, you can do that. You can also do um, La ilaha illallah. All right, break it down to La ilaha illallah. Or um, you can do um, Allahumma, which is the same word within Arabic as within Hebrew as Elohim. Those seven um, angelical principles, which are your seven chakras, your seven churches. Elohuma. You can do the fifth attribute of Allah, which is El Salam, which means the peace, as well as any of the 99 attributes. So, yes, that that is um, what is going on. Yeah, uh, 528 hertz is nothing more than... Um, the heart chakra. That's the heart chakra. All right. Um, or what is known as love. That's the frequency of love. Um, the wrath of the titans. Well, um, the titans, of course, symbolizes um the forces within you. Those particular forces that I just made mention of the Elohim's, the seven chakras. Um, symbolically, talking about the power in which that is within you, and you becoming the God by merging those seven into one, which is the eighth principle, which is symbolic to Atum, or Ptah, which is the father of all the gods, or Netur, of all the Netur rules. All right, so that's what that is symbolic to, and basically you becoming Neo. All right, and the return of the God of the Titans is actually talking about the return of the ancient ones. Of the Nagas, the serpentine fire people, the Naga. Okay, that's actually what he's talking about. All right, so um, these are just some of the things. You know, I think somebody asked me. Well, let me see what other question that we have here. What's the best technique to use when in a lower self moment? Oh, number one, just slow down your breathing. Your breath is what controls your emotions. So by just simply breathing in deep, it brings you back to a rational state instead of just an emotional state. The emotions are good servants, but they make poor masters. This is a this is a African proverb, an Egyptian African proverb. So the emotions make good servants, but it makes poor masters. You don't want to use your emotions as as the master because you do something detrimental to others or to yourself. All right, so um, let me see what other, where do I get these forms? Um, brother, you can get the forms from offline. This year has some type of copies, maybe not everything that I may mention of, but a lot of what I said, you should be able to find some sites in which that goes into it or sample forms. All right, if you go to Scribes, um, Scribes, what, S-C-R-I-B-S, I mean, um, I-B-E, um, Scribes, um, should be able to um, pull up samples of it as well as other um, websites. Just put in what I just finished saying. You can go back and listen to this and you should be able to um, pull it up. Okay, let me see. Say, so you touched on the reptilians, so is that just the brainstem that operates on the lower chakras or is that real snakes looking people? Because i I never seen one. Okay. <laughs> right, well, i never seen one either, but um, the way in which that David Ike actually speaks about is not as one physically, but as a demon or some type of possession in which that takes place and overshadows the person's um, self, and that spirit walks in and takes over um, the person's personality. And when that entity does, um, it can actually cause the person to shape shift in features. All right, and it is said to be reptilian in nature. Um, of course, I mean, I can't just say that it's reptilian nature because speaking of shape-shifting, I mean, in all the indigenous populations, 
whether it's Native American, African, um, Aboriginal, they all speak about shape shifting, but they speak about it from the standpoint that you're being able to shape shift into any animal. Jaguar, cougars, uh, 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 um, deers, uh, you know, anything, you know, so not just a reptile. So, um, right, kind of like the movie um, Foreman. Exactly. So that's what it's really talking about, you know what I'm saying? Um, and these beings are fourth dimensional beings of the lower, um, of the first and second overtone of the lower dimension, of the fourth dimension, and they don't want us to go above them because we're getting ready to actually go above them and becoming fifth dimensional beings. And the third dimension deals with length, width, and height. The fourth dimension deals with time, space, which is um, depth. And the fifth dimension deals with light or energy. So they don't want us to go above them. And so that's their purpose of keeping us down. And they're working through the elite on the planet, you know, um, who has the money, who has the positioning, who has the power. And the lighter you are in that regard, in other words, if you don't have a sufficient amount of melanin, then you become... Um, a better vessel for these channeled entities. For those who have um, more melanin, then there's less chance of you being able to be possessed in that regard. So this is just the natural things. I have nothing to say as far as race racism, but that's just the way that it is. You know, so um, you have to um, understand what's really going on on planet Earth. And yes, those entities attach themselves to the Reptilian portion of the brain, which is the original brain, in which that controls the first and second chakra, which is the reptilian brain and the limbic, limbic, limbic brain. Um, so that's that's what um, actually happens with that. Um, so we can say reptilians, we can say demonic spirits, we can say um, walk-ins, you know, and not all walk-ins are negative, because within African culture, you have the Orishas who walks into um, the people as they are um, in a state of ecstasy, as they are dancing and um, um, feeling the vibration of the music and they're altering their state of consciousness. And those entities come in in order to give information to the tribe in order to help them from out of um, particular problems or families from out of particular problems or they answer questions, you know. So that is also what happens too, you know. So I also want to... Uh, right, it's called mountain, right? So we also want to get that in and explain that science. And that is done within the Native American, Aboriginal, as well as African culture. All the indigenous populations um, do that type of thing as far as being on the drums, dancing, getting excited, and then getting mounted by a spirit. Okay? So um, that's what's going on, y'all. Y'all know the deal. All right? So um, check us out next week. And, um... I'm um, getting ready to head out of here, and uh, we appreciate y'all listening. And um, we out. Peace. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Burn. Proceeding in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Word. Earthly state of human concerns.
concerns in existence An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance Order. System regulates to bring about specifics In the group based on value and natural characteristics Current radiates electromagnetistics Of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it You need to understand how magical this, uh, Something like this every Wednesday can become So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right Get your schedule, your schedule right You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works.